Okay, so we'll start with the 2011 A-level paper, unit number seven, 2011 A-level paper. Okay, so uh, give me answers, guys, so then I know how much I need to explain and uh, where we are going. Okay, so 2011 A-levels, question number 31. That means the previous 30 questions have been from unit one to six. So starting with question number 31. The following table shows the balance sheet of a commercial bank in a banking system. Uh, liabilities are given, assets are given, and they're asking you if the SRR is 15%, how much of excess reserves does the bank have? Yes, uh, credit creation is a big part of unit number seven. It's around uh, 15 to 20, maybe around 15% of unit number seven is on credit creation. So if you don't know credit creation, Remember, I sent you all a video on the past paper class group. And uh, for those who might be watching this YouTube video at a later point, uh, if you don't know credit creation, go to the uh, go to this video right on uh, YouTube. There is this uh, road track page, right? This is my university road track club, uh, uh, road track club of UOC FMF. Go to this, go to playlist and then uh, there will be this thing called Target A-Level Commerce uh, Seminar Series, this one, the one with 26 videos. In this, you will have uh, certain uh, sessions that were done. Go a little down, you would see a session on credit creation. Here, the third one from the bottom, uh, Target A-Level Commerce Seminar uh, Series. So, this video explains the whole of credit creation. So, if you all don't know credit creation, right? This is where you can ideally uh, learn the whole thing. Okay, so that's just a reminder in case you don't know because I won't have the time to go through everything in detail in our past paper class. Okay, uh, this is not even a credit creation question. It's a very simple one. We'll see, guys. They're saying the SRR is 15%. What does SRR mean? That means from the amount of deposits, the commercial banks have to keep 15% as Reserve. Definitely, they have to keep it. That is a statutory reserve requirement made by the central bank. Central bank has said, from your deposits, from your deposits, how much should you keep? You have to definitely keep a 15%. So, how much is 15% of 2,000, guys? 2,000. How much is 15% of that? 15% of 2,000. How much should they keep? 15% ah, of 2000 is a 300. So this is what, this is what, this is our required reserve. The central bank has told us to keep 15%. So from the 2000 of total deposits, the commercial banks have to keep 15% of that 2000, which is a 300. But how much have they actually kept with them? Now this is their required reserve. How much is their actual reserves, guys? In the balance sheet, look and tell me. How much have they actually kept as reserves? So the actual reserves, guys, will be there in the balance sheet. So here in the balance sheet, they say reserves are 500. They've kept, actually, they have kept 500. Central bank has told to keep only 300. So how much of excess reserves does, does this bank have? How much is excess? That's the question, no? What's the number, guys? The excess reserve the bank has is a 200 million, no? Ah, so answer number. One. It's a very easy question to start off with. Then if I ask you guys, what can the commercial banks do with this excess 200? What can they do with this excess 200? Now, they can give this excess 200 as loans. Okay, so for homework, you uh, maybe uh, do the question, see how will the balance sheet look like if, the central, uh, if this commercial bank give this 200 as loans? Try that out for homework. The two-step process, try it out and see. We'll go to question 32. Okay. Which of the following is a liability? No, okay, this is not a banking system, right? Oops. Uh, the following shows the balance sheet of a commercial. Shows the balance sheet of a commercial bank in a banking system. Of a commercial, it's one commercial bank, okay? Uh, which of the following is a liability of a commercial bank? Liability, guys. Now, if you take a commercial bank, now see, this is a simplified balance sheet of a commercial bank. On this side, you have liabilities. On this side, you have assets. 
So they are asking you from this five, which of one is a liability, which one is a liability. That means they have to pay this back. That is not their money. The others most likely might be assets. Which one is a liability? Remember guys, what are liabilities for commercial banks? Any deposits are liabilities for commercial banks, no? So whenever a customer comes and deposits money, whenever a customer comes and what? Deposits money, this is a liability for whom? This is a liability for commercial banks. They have to repay the customer, no? So deposits are liabilities, okay? Deposits are liabilities. Any uh, reserves that these commercial banks have, any uh, loans that they have given, any uh, government securities that they have. What are these guys? Any reserves, loans, government securities that the commercial banks have? So those are what? Those are the assets of commercial banks. Ah. So we'll try to classify these five guys. What do you think? Uh, we'll start with number five. Bank overdrafts. What is that? Bank overdrafts, the loan that the bank has given. No? So therefore, this is a loan. Loans are what? Loans are assets for commercial banks. Then com commercial bills discounted. These are also like reserves. Guys. You can say commercial bills like this. Commercial papers. So they are holding some securities. Doesn't have to be government securities. But some sort of commercial papers. Those are also assets. Guys. Then uh, deposits on the central bank. This is commercial banks reserves. They have put some money in the central bank and kept. That is also their money. That is also assets. Cash, cash on hand. That is also assets. That is the reserves that commercial banks have with them. Okay. So which one is the liability then? This one over here. The time and savings deposits. Why are deposits a liability? Now, remember guys, we are learning this in the perspective of the bank. Now, you will say, sir, deposit is asset no, sir, for you. Now, for me, if I go and put the money in a bank, it's an asset for me, correct? But for the bank, that is not asset, no. Bank has to pay that money back to me. If I go and put 100,000 in the bank, for me, it's an asset. But for the commercial bank, that is a liability. So remember, deposits are liabilities for commercial bank. So this one has to be your aunt. Is that okay? Uh, currency drains is where uh, people withdraw money. We'll come to that when there is a question. Okay. Now, 33. When the central bank enters into a reverse repo agreement with commercial banks. I taught this to you last Saturday also in our doubt clearing session we had uh, in the mock exam. Series. How does this work, guys? How does a reverse repo work? Reverse repo. How does this work? Tell me. Who is selling? Who is buying? Now, reverse repo, guys, is when uh, one party is selling a treasury bill or bond, a government security, with the promise to buy back later. That is repo. What is reverse repo? When one party is buying. So, in a reverse repo, what is happening, guys? What is the central bank doing? Is the central bank buying or central bank selling? In a reverse repo, they are saying central bank enters into a reverse repo. Yes, reverse repo is reverse repo. So what is happening here? In a reverse repo, what happens? Does the CBSL buy or does the CBSL sell? Yes, remember, okay, in a reverse repo transaction, okay, now, I'll, I'll teach the basics to you all, guys. What is a repo? What is a repo? Repo, the long form of this is repurchase agreement. Repurchase agreement. This is the long form of repo. What does a repo mean? A repo is where, now, if they say the central bank is engaging in a repo, what does that mean? That means the central bank is CBSL is selling government securities. CBSL is selling securities. Why is it called a repurchase agreement? They are selling securities with the promise 
to buy it back at a later date. So central bank is saying, look here, I am selling some treasury bills and bonds, securities, and I will buy it back, let's say, two weeks from now. That is what you call a repurchase agreement. You are selling with the promise to repurchase it. Okay. So remember when they say central bank enters into a repurchase agreement or a repo agreement, what does that mean? Central bank is selling, commercial banks are buying. Commercial banks are buying. How uh, will this work later? I'll show you how it affects the reserves and all. Now we'll come to a reverse repurchase, reverse repo, or we call this a reverse repurchase agreement. A reverse repurchase agreement, guys, is the opposite of that. A repo is where the central bank is selling with the promise to buy back. No. A reverse repurchase is where central bank buys with the promise to sell it back later. It's the opposite of the other one. Okay. So here, what happens? The central bank of Sri Lanka is buying securities. Remember that. Right? In a reverse repurchase, what happens? Central bank buys. So when the central bank buys, guys, who are the ones who are selling? Who is selling this to central bank? They're getting into the repurchase, reverse repurchase agreement with commercial banks. No. So commercial banks are selling. Home banks sell. Now I want you to we'll see what will happen because of this. When commercial banks sell, guys. What happens to the amount of reserves commercial banks have now? Commercial banks are selling their treasury, treasury bills and bonds to the central bank. So, com okay, think we look, forget about reserves. Are com banks getting money or paying money? Commercial banks, are they receiving? Are they getting the money or are they paying the money? They are selling to the central bank. Think is when you sell something, you get money, no? Commerce, central bank is buying. Commercial banks are selling. So when you sell, you get money. So see, commercial banks, com banks, okay, com banks get money. So what does that mean for the reserves of commercial banks? The reserves of commercial banks are now increasing or decreasing? Reserves of commercial banks are increasing. Now they have more and more money with them. So if the reserves increase, what can happen to the... Now, uh, think what can happen to money supply overall. If reserves increase, one way that you can think is now commercial banks have a lot of money. No? So, they have, so they have a lot of money because they have sold their treasury bills and bonds. So... On one side, you can say the loans will increase. Therefore, money supply will increase. Okay. But this question is not asking you. Okay. We'll look at this question, guys. Uh, they, are, they are saying when the uh, central bank enters into a reverse repo with commercial banks. Okay. We'll see number three. Money supply will be contracted. Is that correct? Is the money supply coming down? In my story, no, no, commercial bank reserves go up. They can give more and more loans. Money supply will go up. So three is wrong. Okay. Then tell me, deposits held by the commercial banks with the central bank will be reduced. This is the reserves that commercial banks have. Will that be reduced? Commercial banks put deposit some money and keep in the central bank. That is the reserves. So what happens is when the commercial banks sell, central bank will add that money also to that deposit. So the deposit will actually increase. Okay. So now, the question is about the call money market interest rate. I taught this very recently also, guys. Yes, what do you all think? What is the call money market? What's the call money facility? The call money facility is, now, if one of the commercial banks run out of money, okay, what will they first do? They will soon give a call to another bank, okay, and say, you know, small, small problem like this. Can you give me some money? That is what you call the call money market. So then another person will give the interest rate charge is called the call money market rate. So now 
just think guys use your common sense and see remember i told you interest rate is the price of money so now when commercial banks have sold all their stuff now their reserves have gone up so that means there is a lot of money available right there is a lot of money available in the call money market no commercial banks have now sold all their stuff they have so much of money what would happen to the interest rate now? in the call money market when there is a lot of money what happens to the interest rate in the call money market interest rate will increase or decrease simply think that if there is a very little money in the call money market everyone is fighting to get, borrow that money what will happen to interest rates when there is a very little money when there is a very little money everyone wants that money you know he is saying ane give it to me give it to me right interest rates will go up now here the opposite right now there is so much of money in the call money market yeah central bank has purchased some treasury bills and bonds so all the money has come to commercial banks now so they have so much of money what's going to happen to the interest rate the interest rates in the call money market will start to come down okay that is the store trick so which one can be our answer then number 2 interest rates in the call money market will move down first did that make sense guys i'll come to call money market in detail uh if we have a future question i did not go into detail there i'll come into it there are questions in the future that means is it the lending interest rate yes the call money market rate means now when com one commercial bank let's say doesn't have money they ask from another commercial bank that commercial bank says okay uh, i will give you money uh, at let's say 10% interest that is called the call money market interest rate so when there is a lot of money available the call money market interest rate will come down because now if this fellow says 10% you will call another bank and say on oh, that fellow say all right i have so much of money i'll give it to you at 9% so interest rates come down. always remember guys interest rate is the price of money so if there is a lot of money available interest rates will be low if there is only very little money available the interest rate will be high like demand no think demand and supply when there is a big supply is so much available price is very low but when there is a very little supply right price is very high of something no that's how it works so 33 is number 2 how many of you have got that correct guys 33 yes no okay good you got it correct that means with some proper logic yes when there is a repo it's the opposite guys We'll go to thirty-four. Okay, yes, this one put a star and keep not as a MCQ, maybe MCQ also. It's a very probable essay question in unit number seven this time, because Sri Lanka right now is in a disinflationary path. No, after we hit uh, high levels of inflation in twenty twenty two September, from there onwards, our inflation has been coming down. No, last month it was at around four percent. Now I will be. Uh, predicting the inflation for the end of this month i have a, a task at office so i'll let you know what my prediction is we'll see whether that's correct or not at the end of the month so last month i predicted 4% exactly the inflation rate was also 4% so feels good so my i'll most likely be predicting by this uh, friday maybe in our next class i'll let you know what my prediction is and then at the end of the month i'll let you know what the actual rate is so sometimes my prediction is right sometimes my prediction might not be right we'll see okay so what is this this inflation guys does this inflation mean that the prices are coming down is that is what this inflation is is this inflation the decrease in the general price level no right that is deflation ah uh, what is a decline in the general price level that is deflation so that is if your uh, inflation rate is minus let's say you have Uh, let's say minus four percent as your inflation rate. Ah, uh, that means deflation. Prices have come down. But what is this inflation? This inflation is where the rate of inflation is coming down. Prices are not coming down. The rate that is increasing is falling. So, which one is our answer, guys? Answer number four. Now, if I talk a little bit about Sri Lanka, in twenty twenty two, right? 
This is exactly one year from now. In 2022 September, our inflation was at its highest. It was at around uh, close to around 70%, uh, round off the number. And from there onwards, like 70% year on year, what is year on year? That means compared to 2021 September, 2022 September prices have increased by 70%. That's what you call year on year inflation. So from there onwards, every month, it has kept on falling, guys. So in uh, then you had uh, October, you had December, you had January, then likewise, likewise, likewise. Right now you have come to now we are at 2023 September. So the figures are not out yet. 2023 August, the inflation was around 4%. So this little by little, right? I can't remember the exact number. It was around, uh, around in July, it was around 12%, right? So it kept on going down, down, and down. That is what you call disinflation. Now, properly get this into your head, guys. Disinflation doesn't mean prices are going down. Now, what does this 4% mean? When someone comes and says, August inflation is 4%. What does that mean? That means compared to August last year, prices have gone up by 4%. Last year, if something was 100 rupees, now it is 104 rupees. That is what it means. So if the rate of inflation is coming down, so most likely I have not done the prediction yet for this month, but I feel it's, I'll, when I do the numbers, I'll let you all know, I feel it's going to be somewhere around to 2.5 to 3. That is what I feel. I'll give you all the exact number what I predict. Can't say, but I feel somewhere around 2.5 to 3 is what will happen. Is that clear, guys? What this inflation is? This inflation is good, guys. It's okay. Not a problem. Deflation is bad. If prices are decreasing, means that means there is no aggregate demand. People are not demanding for that. Too. Negative inflation is not deflation, guys. Now, for example, okay, now, see, let's take 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2020, 2021, okay? So, let's say, we'll take just the last few years, we'll, 2019, let's say inflation was 10%. 2020, let's say, these fake numbers, huh? 2020, it is 8%. In 21, it is, uh, let's say, 5%. Now, this is what you call deflation, guys. What is deflation? Where the rate of inflation is falling. In 2020, prices increased only by 8%. In 2021, only 5%. See, rate of inflation is coming. That's called deflation. Then what is, sorry, that is called disinflation. What is deflation? Deflation is where inflation becomes negative. Let's say, for example, in 2019, inflation was 5%. In 2020, it's minus 2%. In 2021, it's again, let's say, minus uh, 1%. That is called deflation. When inflation is negative, deflation is where inflation is negative, where the prices are actually coming down. So what does this minus 2% mean? This means prices have decreased by 2% compared to the previous year. So this is called... Right, sorry, let me correct this. This is called disinflation, when the rate is coming down. Then when the actual number is becoming a negative, that is called deflation. Is that clear, guys? Don't confuse deflation and disinflation. Currently, Sri Lanka right now is in a disinflationary part. You can get questions from that. Fine. Okay, yeah, others also I'll okay safe. Disinflation? Okay. Does government target OM disinflation? Yes, government will bring it down to a mid single digit after it'll rise, guys. Now, mainly I'll not go into very high technicalities. Why the inflation is coming down is because the higher base effect. I don't know if you'll understand what the higher base effect is because we are comparing with last year September. Last year September prices were very high. So compared to that high level. This month, it would have not been that high. So, therefore, the rate of inflation will be low. Got it? Then, from 
somewhere October onwards, these base effects are over. So now inflation will again start to pick in a little. Is there an increase in the rate of inflation? Uh, that is normal inflation. There is nothing, no special thing. Okay. Okay, so uh, right, 2011 is done. Negative inflation is deflation. Okay? Deflation is what you call negative inflation, where the inflation rate is negative. Deflation, negative inflation is the same. Okay? Right. Uh, how did you all do so far? There were four questions. Four out of four. Fifth one is about balance of payments. Uh, yes, that is the current, that is depreciation. Okay, good. So then we'll move to the next paper. 